Welcome to Lofty Pursuits and Public Displays of Confection in Tallahassee, Florida. I'm Greg and I make hard candy and today we're going to celebrate. You see, August 31st, 2019 is the 75th anniversary of the invention of the Mai Tai. So we're going to make some Mai Tai candies as part of an assortment of tiki candies that will come out shortly. Before I poured the candy on the cooling table, I've already added the flavor that I've come up with. And I think it's a good approximation of the flavor I'm going for. But of course, to get the flavor right, I have to go and do some research. And I'm going to do research by traveling not very far, just a few blocks from my own house, to a place called the Waterworks. And this place is a local tiki bar, and many towns have them. Tiki bars are Polynesian-themed bars that were first developed by a guy named Trader Vic in Oakland, California. This happened in the mid-1930s, and they eventually became Polynesian-themed bars, and that's what a tiki bar is now. A bar that makes drinks out of fun fruit, flavors, and rum, based on the tradition that was first started by Trader Vic. Waterworks preserves a lot of the traditions of the tiki bars. The water you see running down the windows was started at some of the early tiki bars. You see, they went out with a hose and sprayed the awning so that water would come down, so the patrons inside would think it was raining and would stay longer. This appears to have been invented in LA, and I'm not sure how convincing rain was there. They have tiki figures and masks, and then there's the music. Surf rock was embraced by American tiki culture, and Tallahassee is a great tiki surf rock band called The Intoxicators. So Trader Vic was messing around with some alcohol making a new drink and he didn't have a name for it. And he had some friends visiting the bar from Tahiti and Trader Vic got him to try the drink and they said back to him, Mai Tai Roye, which kind of means either out of this world or the best in Tahitian. And that's what the name became. It became the Mai Tai and there were many variations. And what we're making today is one specific variation. And that variation is the Hawaiian variation that Trader Vic made that has more of an orange and an, a pineapple flavor to it. We're going to do a traditional Mai Tai as well in this assortment, but this is the most common type of Mai Tai in the United States, so I thought I'd start with the basics. We've added color to our soon-to-be hard candy, and we've also added now citric acid to give a little bit of sour to the candy as well. Now we just have to cut it into its component colors, and make it drip and cool so that the temperature becomes even from one end to another in a very malleable clay state so we can make our artwork in the candy. It is the nature of things to cool when they come into contact with something that's cooler than it. In this case, the candy cooling table and the bits of the candy that are touching the metal table have cooled off a whole lot more. They've actually become hard, but the center of it is a liquid pool of molten sugar and I need to get everything to be the same temperature if I'm going to go make candy with this and sculpt it into the shape that I want. And the shape this time is gonna be a little tiki head. I think all of these candies are gonna have different colored tiki heads. This one's going to have an orange tiki head because pineapple and orange are the main flavors besides rum in this candy. If you'd like to try this candy for yourself, please go over to our website www.pd.net. We're going to be accepting pre-orders and later orders for this limited edition series of candy. Or you can always come in person. We're located in Tallahassee, Florida, right off the Thomasville Road exit of I-10. You might even be able to catch us making candy and watch it for yourself out front. While we don't make candy every day and we don't have a specific schedule of when we make candy, we do make an awful lot of it and a lot of people get lucky and hopefully you will too if you come by and you can see us and join us while we make a batch in person. Also check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. We're doing live streams on Facebook on a regular basis now. It's on our Public Displays of Confection Facebook page. We have a separate one just for candy. You might have wondered what the colors were for. The base color is orange, and we're going to do two shades of that, a pulled opaque orange and a clear orange. We also have a little bit of green because I want to put a little pineapple frond, which is a typical way of garnishing this drink. 
and I need white for the background, and I make this by pulling the amber sugar into white by folding in millions of little air bubbles. These air bubbles reflect light, and the light that it reflects makes the candy look white without the need of a food coloring. So now it's time to get the colors done and to build this artwork. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to mix some light green. We're mixing the transparent dark green with some white to lighten it up and to make it opaque. We're going to use this for the center of the little decoration on top of the mug we're going for. My goal is to make it resemble two leaves from the top of a pineapple. I'm going to start with the Tiki Guy's nose. It's near the middle of the candy, and I'm going to start by making a cylinder and wrapping it with some clear orange for definition, and then padding it out to the width of the final figure. And then I make the eyes inside a block of candy that's designed to go on top of the first block. These tiki figures always have great grins, and this grin is going to have five big orange teeth. And now it's time to assemble our tiki head and attach the little frond on the top. We now have a podcast, and you can check it out on our Patreon page if you're a subscriber early, or about four weeks later to the general public everywhere you could normally get a podcast, and off the podcast button from www.pd.net, or under the play tab at the Lofty Pursuits website. We give more history about the video and the history we're talking about, we answer viewers' questions and letters, and we cover whatever is interesting and we're doing right now. We'll first wrap our design with some pulled white that will give it a distance from the background and give it some good contrast. And then we'll wrap it with a bright orange wrap for the outside. This orange wrap not only makes it look clean, but makes it easier to cut further down the line. Now that we've built one giant piece of candy, we gotta get it down to about 5,000 small pieces. And we scale the candy by pinching it down and reducing this log into rods. The machine this candy is spinning on is called the batch roller. The batch roller keeps the candy spinning because at this point the candy is still very hot. That's why we're wearing the fashionable gloves. And it's there spinning, keeping it from going flat and destroying the design. The candy is a non-Newtonian fluid. And by spinning, we keep it in place and we keep it in shape. But when we hit it with the scissor, it shatters like glass. But when we move it, it's flexible and we can scale it. Sometimes we need the candy to flow and sometimes we need it to shatter. And mastering how it works both ways is why we are sugarsmiths. Now we get to take the rods and bring them down into individual pieces. And we do this on our candy anvil, or as some of you out there is referred to it as a canvil. We never know how the design worked until the end, so let's take a look at it. Thank you for watching our video, we do appreciate it. If you want to get our candy, you can get it at www.pd.net. 
And if you like the music, the band is called The Intoxicators, and there will be links associated with this video. And we want to thank them for letting us shoot them and use them in this video. If you ever come by Tallahassee, you can visit us in person. We're right off I-10 in the Thomasville Road exit. You can also find us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, where we're now doing live streams on a regular basis. It'll be on our Public Displays of Confections Facebook page, not our Lofty Pursuits Facebook page. And if you can, please check out our podcast wherever podcasts are available or our Patreon page. Thank you again for watching.